What up YouTube, it's DoomNYC here with another deck profile. Uh, this time, I'm doing Battling Boxer. I mean, this is pretty fun for me because I was away from the game for so long and then to come back and have like so many different decks to build, so many different decks to play. It's just been like really, really crazy, but I'm having a lot of fun, so... So here's um, battling boxes. Um, you can see there's a lot of tech choices in here. So let's go over the deck. We got the two blasters. Obvious. If you're gonna play anything like fire base, you should play blaster. Uh, three glass jaw. Two uh, masked chameleon. This works good with uh, glass jaw. You can get this back, so it's good. Three switch hitters. Get back your glass jaws. Uh, one spar, I don't like more than one, actually. It just, you know, it's good. This card is, like, only good first turn. Like, if you summon headgear and then you dump to the graveyard, then you can special this and then go into your lead yoke. But other than that, I don't know. I just don't like the fact that you can't conduct your battle phase. Remember, guys... You heard it right here, Doom NYC. Any cards that don't let you conduct your battle phase are bad. Alright, Pot of Duplicity, anybody? Yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, I play one, Debris. This card is so good. Um, I'm thinking about possibly taking this up to two. Even though there's only these two targets. I mean, I'm just... Oh, and this. The Butter Spy. But the Butter Spy is a weird card because you can't always summon it like it misses timing sometimes so like especially like if you summon uh switch hitter but whatever this card's pretty good if i summon a monster like if i summon glass jaw and i have this in my hand i can uh special summon it and then i can go into a rank four it's it's okay you know I think I might take it out though for the second debris dragon because it's been working really good three headgears your foolish burial um, the butter spy and the two counter blows I actually when I first started testing this deck I didn't think this card was that good but as I started to play it more I noticed that this card was needed um, you know for Lee yoke plays and stuff like that so it just it turned out to be really good so I, I'm actually liking this card a lot um let's go on so that's 18 monsters let's go into the spells we got reinforcement dark hole uh dark world dealing three of these um for those of you that don't know glass draws effect will activate if you ditch it with this because you disc discarding glass draw is the last thing to happen so um, his effect goes off. He's kind of like a dark world where as long as he's the last thing to happen His effect will go off. So that's good But ditching him with blaster because you're destroying a card destroying a card is the last thing to happen The effect doesn't go off, but for this it's good. So it's kind of like a little mini draw engine so instead of like uh, Minusing it's actually even so it's pretty good foolish burial Again, this is for your glass draw. Um, this is too many plays. Like first turn, if you get headgear, you'd summon headgear, uh, send switch hitter, and then if you can foolish burial your glass draw, you do that, get the switch hitter back to your hand. It's just a really good first turn play. Um, Warrior returning alive. This is better late game. Um, if you draw it early, then more times than not, I just get the headgear again and dump something else. But if you get it late game, you're going to go for your switch hitter. Or if you have Dark War Dealings, then you go for your Glass Jaw. So, you know, whatever you guys want. Uh, triple Duality, I like it in the deck, and actually it's necessary. I know I did say that, you know, if you're running 18 or more monsters, you didn't need to run it. But this deck does run kind of slow. Pot of Duality makes it help a little better. Uh, you don't have to run this. You could run... Uh, triple shard of greed but you know most of the time you know if you're using this card you need something right away 
Shard of Greed, it all depends. Getting that card first turn in any deck that uses it is a must. So just remember that. If you're going to play Shard of Greed, you got to play three. Two space. Forbidden Lands is by far the MVP card of this deck. If for lead yoke, because a lot more players, because of the way the format ended up, a lot more players are playing D prisons. So lead yoke, you know, he's just a boss. I can't believe that if you want to play bad in the boxer in real life, like all of these are commons, and lead yoke is even like a rare. I think this is a rare, right? It's ridiculous. Lead Yoke is by far one of the best Xyz in the game. I can't believe that it's not like a super, uh, at least a super rare, you know, or at least an ultimate rare because this card is so good. It's so good. But anyway, I think this deck, like, it needs maybe like one or two more things. Like, if it gets like a draw card, and then a card, and actually, I mean, it's pretty good. The, the, the cards have good effects. I mean, I think the deck is nice. The, this deck can really become good, you know, if somebody really decides to put some work in. But anyway, so that's the spells. Need the lands. For the traps, uh, trap, bottomless trap hole, mirror. Four. I only play one mirror. Only because I'm um, playing the trap stun. You need to play the trap stun because the deck does have the ability to go into multiple exceeds at once, depending on how often like how many glass draws you like not glass draws how many switch hitters you draw it it'll definitely you know can spam so trap stun is nice uh torrential compulse is just compulse <laughs> it's compulsory that you run this card um two fiendish chains this card is so good and one warning um Eight traps, not that many traps because with lead yoke you don't need it. Extra, we got the jeweled archfiend, uh, crimson blader, scrap dragon, stardust. I mean, this is just for your mass chameleon plays, and basically it gives you the option of being able to go into multiple rank eight. Uh, the one black rose is in here because right now black rose is necessary if you can run it. So. The breeze with a counter blow, well, counter punch, will get you instant black rose. Or Boros, this deck can go into it. I never do go into it, but it can go into it. Uh, it's only because I run triple lead yoke. If you're going to play this deck, you have to play triple lead yoke. This card is too good not to play three of. And the bad thing about switch hitter is when you summon him and you use his effect to get something back from the grave you can only special summon a battle in boxer so almost every time you use this card you're going into lead yoke there's just no way around it blade armor ninja uh, photon popular operative black ship staple excalibur you know you're using this in any warrior deck uh laval Vault chain uh what i like about this is you can go into this and send glass draw from the deck to the grave and you get the effect so you can add a switch hitter or, or a headgear whatever you need to your hand it's nice and then one cowboy because you just never know when you're playing with lead yoke and you're altering your attack so much because every time he every time he discards a material to avoid destruction he gains 800 so when he's on the field with no materials he's at 38 which is just kind of ridiculous so uh, sometimes they'll have less than 800 life points you can go into this and just attack the game all right guys so let's watch some replays and see how the deck plays a little bit yes I've cleaned up my replays so we're gonna watch the first duel here and I'm playing this guy and he's playing mermails so as you can see I'm gonna set the glass draw because I just draw all monsters which is strange but you know whatever so he's got a pretty established field, but I'm like, I got two blasters in my hand, so I'm going to go into lead yoke, see what he does. Because, I mean, I know Mermail doesn't really play traps. Most of the top decks right now, they're not playing traps, and that's bad. That's why I say, like, those decks are just not good. Dragon Rule is the only one that can get away with stuff. So I'm going to blast to that card, attack, attack. I got lead yoke on the field, so at this point, 
he's going to have to do some good stuff to get this off the field because it's not going to be that easy. But, you know, they are, and I'm going to get the spar back, you know, uh, mermails are able to do some stuff. Because I use a second blaster to get rid of that guy. I'm going to go into Stardust because I'm not sure what this is. I don't see many people playing Abyssqual, so I'm like, all right, he's got 26. So he wants me to attack into this so he can get some effects, go into that. And he stalls out for a turn, but it's all good. You know, so now this guy is going to go for it. He's going to special summon all of these guys. He's going to go into the big boy. But I'm going to, see, get rid of those. But then these guys are there. So he's still going to get all these monsters on the field. He goes into this guy, right? So I'm like, okay. I save myself from destruction for one turn. But then I'm like, damn. How am I going to do this? So I lose my monster. But now he has no materials. So yeah, he's gonna attack into Stardust, kill that. And now he's looking, you know, pretty good, but I draw the counter punch. So I'm like, alright, I'm just gonna summon this, set that. <clears throat> right. So I know he's gonna attack this and then attack that. And that's what I want, because I wanna black rose the field right now. Which is what I'm gonna end up doing. And see, I'm just gonna summon this and attack for game, and that's gonna be it. So, you know, I, if you couldn't play Blaster, that'd be pretty bad. And battling boxers, you know, I'm not too sure, but this guy's playing uh, some weird deck. A couple of, again, a couple of ace is bad. So you know, disturbance the strategy. So he sees me summon this. He like changed. That. I don't know why. But I guess to get the the cards. I'm not really sure why. But anyway. So I'm gonna summon the headgear. I'm gonna dump he's gonna you know, Lee Joke is just boss. You know, and he's gonna try appropriate here because he's gonna play Cup of Ace, it's gonna go to my side. I'm just gonna trap stun this because I don't want that going off. I don't want him drawing cards because I knew he was running Exodia. So, <laughs> you know, this obviously, anytime someone's running Exodia on me, I'm like, okay, I already know what I'm gonna do. So he plays this, he discards because I drew a card, he's gonna get to draw two. I'm like, nope, you're not getting to use that effect again, sorry. So I made sure I killed appropriate right away. It's gonna battle fader. I don't know why he didn't battle fader immediately, but it's all good. So again, see this is the second time he cup of aces and I draw two. That's why I'm telling you that that card is bad. Don't play that ever. So he reshuffles my hand. I'm like, okay, that's cool. It's fine with me. And I'm just gonna be able to attack with everything here. And he just decides to scoop because there's just really nothing you could do at that point. He has no more stall cards. All right, finally, I'm playing somebody using the new zombie shadow uh, vampire shadow. Well, uh, you guys will see my deck for this one of these days because you know zombies is my favorite. I'm like really saving it because I really want to post a, a really good deck. So. He gets attacked twice. Oh, get rid of that. And that's a good trap to get rid of too because I don't want him to play that field card and start destroying stuff for free. That's no good. So yeah, I know how that works. So he's going to remove the headgear and he's going to attack, make me send another spell. I'm just going to send another Dark World Dealings because why not, you know? I'm going to have to play Dark World Dealing here, get the switch hitter. Now, because I got lucky and I got that switch hitter, I was able to go in a lead yoke. So I'm going to set these two. And now he's going to go into, and this is like one of the best plays 
that this deck can do is a torrential and you keep your lead yoke you just attach a material and you go to 3000 yeah i do that a lot with uh dark hole also just to like you know avoid this structure like see you're gonna see it right here and i'm gonna ditch get the switch hitter back he's gonna be at 38 and i'm just gonna attack i got the, the lance and that's game over <sighs> that's why you know the cards that destroy everything dark holes torrentials you there there must plays in battle and boxers so you gotta play those all right here we go um this guy's playing something uh pretty random he's playing like that skill drain cyber like malefic deck but he's got this uh, genesis arch fiend in there i'm like okay i'm just gonna bottomless this i'm gonna attack for two I'm gonna play him a little slow because I don't know. I didn't know what he was playing yet. He sets two mirror force. So there goes Malefic World. You know how that works. I wanted that in the grave, so I'm like, okay. I'm just gonna dark hole this. Oh actually I blaster the field the field spell. I'm gonna go into lead yoke here. He's gonna He doesn't activate Mirror Force. Yeah, maybe he should have. I don't know. He sets the Barbaros. I'm like, okay, there we go again, Dark Hole. Lead Yoke's effect goes off, get the switch hitter. Like, how many pluses does that equal, guys? I go into another Lead Yoke. He's going to mirror for some, like, nope. Does not work that way. Going to get switch hitter back to my hand again. You tell me if that's broken or not. He decides, all right, it's, I'm, not, I'm not even going to bother. It's over. So he scooped. I'm telling you, battling boxes, they can do some damage. You know, we just need that perfect build. All right. So this guy's playing Baryon's Force, and he's playing Unicorn Spear. So this guy's pretty bad, but, you know, it's a duel. But he's using Deep Prison. So, you know, obviously being able to summon Lead Yoke is, like, a big deal. That's why you have to play the Lance. And now, see, I got lucky I drew the Lance there. So I'm going to get that guy. I'm going to go back into Lead Yoke. Attack, he's going to Deep Prison. I gotta chain that lance, cause he goes the gate attack. You know, another reason why he's bad. But again, you know, with lead yoke, you gotta protect him. So I'm like, sure, you can do that, no problem. Hit the warning. I just bottomless this monster. See, he's playing photon slayer. That's just terrible. Hit another one. I'm like, nope. And you know what I love about that? When you did, when you detach. The attack that goes through hits him heavier. So at this point, he's like, all right, I didn't draw anything good. And I could set my honest, but that really doesn't make sense. So he decides, nope, he's going to just scoop right there. So I, play, I played a lot of duels, like, consecutively. And I just kept playing, like, these random decks. Like, this dude's playing, like, a Cyber Dragon deck. So I go lead yoke first turn, and he solemns that. I mean, I would do the same thing, so I don't even blame him for that. So he like, he dumps Cyber Dragon, takes <laughs> twin. So he's gonna hit me for a seven thousand right now. You know that's pretty good, but here comes the comeback. Gonna black hole, going to lead yoke again after I attack. And Lee Joke is just a boss. So he's going to bottomless, but that's not going to do anything to me. Attack, remove Counter Punch, game over. See, and Counter Punch surprises people because they don't expect it from, from uh, decks like this, you know? Okay, here's the final duel for Battling Boxers. Alright, Heretics. But he draws bad, he draws double decree. So he's got to end up setting this. Oh, and this guy's playing uh, Maiden and Blue Eyes in his deck. So he's playing an interesting build. So he d destroys the Torrential, you know, the card I wanted to keep, but that's okay. I'll let him detach and then negate his effect. He sets the two. The crease, I'm like, all right. Get the counter punch. Send that. Space that. Let's get this. Go into lead yoke. I'm going to attack. Counter punch, bam. And here we go, we're gonna start doing, but he's got the maiden in his hand, so you know he's summoning that right now. So I'm like, okay, you know, no problem. 
I'm gonna go into Excalibur. So when he summons that, I'm gonna hit him for that four thousand. And the only thing I don't like is he gonna put Maiden back into attack mode. So I'm gonna have to do it again. And you know, at this point it gets kind of annoying. So I'm like, alright, I'm not gonna do that. He sets the dark hole, he doesn't want to destroy his own stuff. Yep, so I'm gonna get the chameleon, but I'm gonna keep it. There we go. And then I'm like, alright, I'm gonna just make him bigger, get back the headgear, and you know, be prepared for next turn. So this guy is actually gonna draw lucky, get this. And he's gonna attack twice. I don't know why he was doing this. Like made no sense to me, because he's making me plus off of it. Then he goes into this and he detaches and I'm stuck with one. I'm like, okay, I gotta do something. So I'm gonna blast blast to one of the random back rows. Go into lead yoke again. See, this is why you need to play triple lead yoke in the deck, because you go into it so fast. You recycle it so much, it's ridiculous. So at this point, he knows that I know that Heretics don't play back row. So look at this, trade in, MST, MST, Dark Hole. I'm just gonna attack, I'm not gonna summon anything here. And that's why he scoops. So guys, that was Battle in Boxer. I know it's kinda late to be posting this video, but I don't care, as you can see, it's 11, 11 p.m. But yeah, uh, Battling boxers uh, gonna be good. I've been playing Bujin. I'm waiting for YGO Pro to update uh, with some new cards because I want to try out that new Bujin Beast Warrior. But you know, here, here we here's the deck again. Um, it's pretty good. I'm thinking about taking out the Butter Spy for a second to breeze. But if you got some better tech choices, leave your comments down below. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up the video and subscribe and until next time YouTube, peace.